Alright, hello everyone. I'm back from my holidays. Just in time for Wishing Karen Dawn. I'll probably talk about Ishmael and Refraction Railway uh, a little bit after uh, the Dawn, uh, just to catch up a little bit from what I missed. But let's talk about Dawn first. I think that this banner here is a definitely skip for everyone. It's probably just a filler banner or it's a precursor to another Dawn ID that will light poise and bleed. Uh, the passive here is probably the only reason I will use this ego. Uh, this ego itself rolls, I think, 27. 27 is not as good as some other characters, so clashing power is not particularly important. The stuff that it applies is not bad. It applies bleed count plus 4 to 3 targets as well as 5 tremors. So if you want to use it just for ad clearing, it's actually not terrible. Because you apply a bunch of bleed count to targets, then your characters that are just like win rating a bunch of ads will be able to apply a bunch of bleed to those bleed counts and you can actually get quite a lot of damage. Passive is decent, uh, I would say, but there is no current like bleed and poise ID for Dawn. It's a bit wonky. I feel like uh, a Pequod Dawn would be needed to get some good value out of this. Otherwise, the only characters that can actually use this right now is someone like um, someone like uh, End Dawn or someone like Middle Dawn because those two are related to bleed and poise. Of course, you could do something like um, you could just uh, put a bunch of bleed characters like the Pequod crew on the left side and then after that, you just run like W Dawn or some shit just to get poise calm whenever they defeat an enemy. A uh, little bit sussy, but yeah, this is definitely a cope. Uh, I don't think that this ego is actually going to be much use. Uh, it's really only for defeating enemies, so you need to use it in wave battles. And then the awakening here is um, just... I'm mostly focused on the bleed count here. The paralyzed is not even guaranteed, it needs to be hit hit. And this... Paralyze is this turn, so you need to be super fast in order to get the Paralyze on it. So I don't think that this Ego is particularly useful in any way. Maybe just as a starting Ego to just boost your damage output by defeating a bunch of adds who have bleed on them. And then you can get a bunch of poise count to increase your damage output later on. But otherwise, I really don't see any IDs for Dawn that really, really like this. I think Middle Sister is a bit too cope because she has no poise count in her kit at all, so you won't be able to maintain really high poise. You maybe could run like what Captain Ishmael with the Wild Ego to give her some poise, but that is really, really very expensive. So I don't know. Yep, so yeah, I, I, I really don't know for this one. I feel like a, a Pequod crew ID for Dawn here would actually make that Ego kind of useful to take for some wave battles. Otherwise, I don't particularly see it as very, very useful. It's a good build-up ego, right? Uh, anyway, uh, besides that, the ego is permanent anyway, so you can just take your time and wait for the ID to drop first, and then you can go and dispense it if it becomes quite important in the future. Uh, yeah, but if it's not going to be important, feel free to just keep it because it's just a standard ID. And for the this banner, right? It's an ego banner. You never pull on ego banners because pulling on ego banners is just really sus because there's only one thing you're pulling for. Yeah, right. Next one, let's talk about the Captain. The Captain uh, is not super busted as I thought she was, but still really, really fun in Mirror Dungeon. I have a lot of fun with her just by using the uh, Bleed Ego Gifts as well as the Poise Ego Gifts. The fact that she's both makes it so that she's able to use both really, really well, and you can actually get some crazy numbers on her skills. In Refraction Railway, I think she's okay for the Pequot crew. Uh, ultimately, this is the like she is the glue that ties the entire Pequot crew together because the assist attack here you definitely want to have characters with pride skills on their skill 1 of course you can also go like a bit off uh, the Pequot crew you just don't run the Pequot crew you run maybe a few characters with a bit of bleed and bleed count so that she's able to trigger her skill 3 here for some massive damage and then her skill 2 here can be used with just um, a regular resonance and there will be a 60% chance to trigger the uh, assist attack. Yeah, so you could use her as a, uh, just a free assist attacker, or you could just uh, try to build your whole team around her and use the Pequot crew to attack with. I feel it's more low-friendly anyway for the Pequot crew, so you might as well just use the Pequot crew. Lots, uh, much easier, just basically play Candy Crush. You just see a bunch of blues, all right, kill up all the blues. Some shit like that. Really, really easy gameplay, actually. And then for Envy, oh, just queue up all the Envy, then boom. Okay, now you got aggro and protection onto your Envy character, like your middle or your quick wing. Really, really good shit. And then skill 3, 
Excuse me, scaling on the missing HP was a bit uh, sus because actually, if you look at hook loose, hook loose is uh, zero point five percent per one percent. Uh, so the scaling of Hooklu is a lot better in that regard because you're able to do additional 50% if the part is broken which is a lot of extra damage. Uh, I think Chef is weaker in terms of the uh, scaling. Uh, her scaling is 5% of the target's missing HP up to 20% while for Ishmael is going to be... Uh, for Ishmael is going to be... 0.3% per 1% and caps at 30%. Yeah. So it's not going to do as crazy amounts of damage as a Hooklu. But they, the trade off here is that this move here has some crazy clashing power. Hooklu only clashes with a 16. But this skill here, with the coin power bonus, this skill here can actually clash up to 24. And if you run a mirror dungeon with the poise and bleed ego gifts, you pretty much can go all the way to 50. I've seen someone roll 50 on their skill tree. It's crazy. So yeah, this thing here can hit like a truck with or without the scaling. And if you get the stagger, you also get some free bonuses and you get a lot of other good stuff. So not a super disgusting skill tree, but still a very powerful skill tree to absolutely destroy targets. And if you run a mirror dungeon, you can get some crazy numbers as well. Yep. But this Ishmael is by herself, right? Not a particularly good character. She needs to be run with the bleed character to pop off as well as characters preferably with like a pride resonance or any sort of resonance in general. You could go for envy resonance with like a bunch of the good characters. For example, like maybe Rabbit or W Dawn, W Ryoshu, and then plan to do an assist attack by the time you get to the nuke phase where you have quick suppression, you have rip space charge, you have mind whip charge, sorry not mind whip, your, your skill tree is available, your uh, data is available, and then you just nuke, 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 and then you nuke, something like that, that could work. Pretty much the good ball strat, use a bunch of good characters to just nuke a target, so she is definitely viable for that kind of strat. But of course, you know, there's always this character here who has some amazing clashing power here, uh, 18, uh, this one is 14, this one is a lot, it's Mind Whip, although you have to just play around Mind Whip, so yeah, just build up and then just skill tree, pretty much. But this character here, her skill tree nuke is honestly a lot better just cause it's HP damage scaling, so you will do a lot more damage than Mind Whip. So if you want to go pure nuke, you also can. Just ignore skill 2, ignore skill 1 and the special mechanics, and just use skill tree just to nuke a target. <laughs> it's actually pretty funny if you just use it for the skill tree. Yep. But I think it's very very fun character, very very powerful skill tree that you can use in the nuke team. And if you just run her with the Pequot crew, you can get a lot of value out of her as well. She is the glue that uh, that glues together all of the Pequot crew. So yeah, definitely a must pull character. I really really love her. Uh, she is going to be a season 3 exclusive character. Uh, so you will want to uh, go and get her before the season ends. You still have a little bit of time for the new players just to get to grinding. You definitely want to keep one just for uh, later, I guess. Because you will be able to do some really, really fun stuff in Mirror Dungeon. I mean, even if you just use her alone, I'm already able to get a lot of coin power. I don't even need to do the poise stuff. I can just do the bleed stuff and I'll be able to do a lot of crazy stuff. Because she has, she has a lot of uh, bleed related uh, statuses in her kit. Yeah. So you can just do bleed stuff with her either way. So yeah, I would still recommend getting her. Just cause, you know, dripped out, bleed, can be used in her Peacock crew or can be used just for skill tree uh, nuking, just like Chef Yoshu was used for skill tree nuking back in the day. But if you want to do refraction railway meta, then feel free to just go ahead and get your Rupture Gang. Because Rupture Gang in the end was the one that did like sub, the, sub 40, right? I think 36 was the Rupture Gang's meta. Uh, was the Rupture Gang's uh, lowest turn. Uh, I think someone had to reroll a crap ton to get 36 turns. But yeah, Rupture Gang is definitely really, really strong now with the addition of like W. Yi Sung. Man, I remember the days when there wasn't a W. Yi Sung and there wasn't Dimension Shredder. And we all looked at Rupture and we all thought it was dog shit because there was no count. Count was always the main problem. And then they added shit, they added count, and then Rupture became broken because Rupture is true damage. It's really, really fun to watch. Right, so anyway, uh, let's summarize it. Uh, the banner is not worth pulling. Uh, you can just go and dispense the ego and it's generally not worth to pull uh, uh, non Walpurgis and single ego banners because it's not particularly worth uh, trying to get one ego that's not even going to be super used and it's a standard ego. You might as well just dispense that shit. For Captain Ishmael, I still recommend people go and pull her just because I really, really love her. She's so cool. Oh, look at her. She's so cool. Okay, okay. Anyway, I'm done. That's it for this review. I'm back for the foreseeable future. So 
I will be catching up as per usual. Alright, so thanks for watching guys and see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.